here. Tennessee Titans versus Baltimore Ravens. Look, both teams coming off a loss. Both teams have massive flaws. And at this point, you know, I'm we're we're in the second half of the season. You have flaws. We're, the defense for the Tennessee Titans, you cannot say that they're going to come together. It, it yeah. they're they're a flawed defense. I still like the, the Tennessee Titans. The Baltimore Ravens, you cannot say, hey, they're going to immediately develop a, a down the field passing game with Lamar Jackson. They're flawed. Well, that's yeah, that's very true. But but you know, they lost to the Patriots, and okay, is that the the worst thing to ever happen to? And what was looked like a tropical storm, honestly. Well, exactly. So we just yeah. got done talking about it, man. In those elements, you know, <laughs> who's better, who's worse, typically goes out the window. Right, you just got to kind of manage your your you know what yeah. the best you can, and yep. you know, and it usually what happens in in win win games or rain or snow is it makes the better team worse. Yeah, right. It kind of it brings them down to the the level of the other players. So I I don't think I just don't think we should read too much into that Baltimore loss. But that being said, they're not a down the field throwing team at yeah. least not to this point, and they may they may not be win. Wind, rain, or snow, or sunshine, right? Yeah, you know, I think early in the season, I was saying it with kid gloves, honestly, because of how good they were. Were they 14-2 and two in the regular season last year? But, you know, I, it's it's valid enough now to say Lamar Jackson, if anything, has regressed as a down-the-field passer. I think his accuracy yes. is worse. And part of that is because, like you say, you put stuff on film. You have tendencies. People know how to play right. you. And I right. think that it started in the playoffs with Vrabel, and the Tennessee Titans said, you know what, we're going to crash up. You know the, the the Ravens. What they do is they live on that. Um, they live on running the ball at the middle, and sucking the linebackers up, and then throwing a little seam route to Mark Andrews. Um, and what the Titan the Titans basically said is, uh, we're gonna you know let you run the ball. And we're gonna we're gonna really take that seam route away, and we're gonna crash up. And Lamar Jackson beat us over the top if you can, and he has not shown the ability to do that. This year, I thought that Lamar Jackson was gonna take a leap in passing like we've seen from Josh Allen. Sure, and what sure, ended up sure. happening is Josh Allen leaped over, um, for our YouTube audience, leaped over um, Lamar Jackson as a passer. And I didn't see that coming. I really didn't. But it is well valid. It is valid. But let me just say this, man. Like, why, why do we always want to change the guy that runs? You know, like, maybe his brand of ball is that he likes to run more so than, than any other quarterback. And it's like, all right, well, if, if it's working because he's he was an MVP and they were 14 and two, why are we always so quick to say, well, you got to figure out how to throw better? You know what it reminds me of mm-hmm. is, again, um, ex Washington fan I am, um, RG3, the backup quarterback for Baltimore, going yeah. from his rookie season. Then, of course, he shreds his knee at the end of that really good run, and they would have beaten Seattle in that game. They were handling Seattle before the knee gave out on him, and then Cousins had to come in and all that. But, um, yeah, dude, like, it, it. and then they went to the second season, and and he didn't want to run as much. They still ran a little bit, but they didn't want to run as much. It, it reminds me a little bit of that. I do think defenses are playing smarter. And look, Baltimore, it, it, I think Yonda retired, and then they lost Staley, and they're losing pieces in their offensive line that matters. Like, last year, the, the Patriots couldn't block anybody. We were just talking about them. And then yeah. they come back this year, they fix it, and they're a physical run team. And the problem, as, as we've criticized the Patriots, the problem with the Patriots is they try to pass too much and get too cute. The Ravens, I think that they still play good football. They're still a playoff team. But the reason I don't think they're as elite is because, like you said, I don't think they're running maybe as much as they were. And I think defenses know the bread and butter route for Mark Andrews, that seam route. I've seen it for years, that read option Uh play. I I watched that for years with RG3. It's a beautiful play, but they're ready for it now. And the way that you, in my opinion, the way that you neutralize that is you just take more deep shots. Uh-huh. Not to say that the, that the Ravens aren't, but you got to complete some of them, man. Just run Marquise Brown and Devin Duvernay on double goes. They're faster than everybody else, and just chuck it. It's interesting because he has regressed, and then you got to wonder, like, in my opinion, if a quarterback that good starts to regress in a specific area, you got to point to coaching, don't you? Like, I, I think mean, so, and I, and I really do. And Lamar Jackson, um, to his credit or discredit, I don't know. I mean, it depends on your opinion, but he's come out and he's been critical of the play calling. Um, he was critical. Oh, okay. Well, if, if dude, if I don't think you put that in the press personally, but yeah, if there's dissension by way of play calls between the quarterback and the coach, that is a recipe for disaster, man. Yeah. Cause I saw that in green Bay in, in 2018. I think it was Air Rogers and McCarthy. They were not on the same page. Yeah. And when that happens, like it's, it's just not going to work. 
You know, it's it's for for me like I, energy. I think those are the conversations you need to have in house, and I think those conversations need to happen. To put it in the press to me shows. It to, this is my opinion, um, and I'm a little bit of a what I'm. I'm 38, so I'm a little bit you know aged out. This is the way we came up, Brad, in terms of watching NFL. Don't put it out in the press. Just leave it in the locker room. But when you put it out in the press, what it says to me when your quarterback is your quarterback, I think should always in, in public say it's on me. I need to be better. It's on yes. me. I need to be better. When you come out and you'd be like, Oh, our offense is too predictable, blah, blah, blah. It, it looks like you're shifting the blame. Even if there is blame to be shifted, you have those conversations in house, in my opinion. I mean, this, why are you putting, putting pressure, you know, use the media and your contract negotiations, not well, in like I your play calling. Negotiations. I agree. I agree. I think the, the only answer, sorry to interrupt for the coach, the quarterback, whoever it is should say, it's on me. I need to be better. Yep. And that's it. That's the only answer that the entire world is going to respect. Yep. Right. And Including the receivers the in your locker say. room. Like, you know, you just got to say, it's on me. Now, if you're on the sideline and somebody drops something, you get in their face. I have no problem with that. If you're in you know, the, the locker yeah. room and they're going over the game plan, you're like, Greg Roman, this is way too vanilla. They're, they're, they've been, they know what we're doing. We got to change stuff. Have those conversations. Don't go out to your media and be like, oh, they know what we're doing, blah, blah, blah. That's, again, that's my opinion. I know, Brad, you and me are there. I guarantee you everybody who's 10 years younger than us would support Lamar Jackson, and I'm fine with that. Like, I don't, I don't, need, to, I don't need you to agree with me. That's just how I feel. Um, and I respect your ability to disagree with me. I respect your opinion. But you respect my opinion. Uh, yeah. Tennessee, look, Tennessee has the game plan to beat Baltimore. It's an interesting one. I'll get you with the line here. Bavada has Tennessee plus six and a half on the road versus Baltimore. Both teams coming off loss. Tennessee's loss is on Thursday, so it's like a mini, a mini, mini buy. Mini buy week. Yeah, I like Tennessee to cover for sure. 